Blog Talk Radio. He was up each morning with the dawn because he knew his daily run was long and hard and he had to be ready to get his freight train down the track determination he would never lack the little locomotive called freight train Freddy. Hi everyone, welcome to Getting on Top. I'm your host Paul Morris, and uh, you list, uh, you're listening to uh, Getting on Top on Block Talk Radio, and we're here Wednesdays from 4 to 4:30 p.m. That's East Coast time, and we broadcast from the Southern Hudson Valley region of New York State. Where you are out of town is that's the just the northern suburbs of New York City, my hometown, and. Uh, that little uh, ditty you heard was called Freight Train Freddy, and uh, the, the person who sang and wrote that song is Peter Tazone, who is also the illustrator of the book that I wrote. It's a rhyming children's story about a 19th century steam engine as it makes its way through the uh, West. Uh, eight, yeah, 19th century. <laughs> and uh, if you want, someone would like to see some of the beautiful pictures Peter drew, or read some of the uh, the rhyming verse that I wrote, you can go to ftfcreations.com. That's FTF as in Freight Train Freddy, creations.com. And if someone has a uh, question or comment for me and my guest, you can call 1-347-215-9456. And uh, the show is about half an hour. We may go over. I have an extra 15 minutes allowance, if if necessary, uh, that will be on the recording of the show. I'm very happy today and pleased to have with me Garnet Schulhauser. And uh, Garnet is, uh, is, is the author of Dancing on a Stamp, and we're going to be talking about that book today. Garnet is a retired lawyer who lives in Vancouver Island, Canada. It's on the West Coast. He practiced uh, corporate law for over 30 years with two blue uh, blue chip law firms, and after retiring in 2008, began a new career as an author. His first book, Dancing on a Stamp, was published in 2012. And in that book, Garnet recounts how his life changed dramatically. One day in 2007, while still practicing law, he confronted He was confronted on the street by a homeless man named Albert, who was actually a wise, wise, having trouble with my words today, a wise spirit in disguise, uh, who was an emissary from the spirit world. This seemingly chance encounter launched a provocative dialogue with Albert, who disclosed startling new truths about all of life's big questions, including uh, our nature as eternal souls, the cycle of reincarnation on earth, how we create our reality through free will. And and um, and Garnet wrote uh, Dancing on a Stamp at the request, at Albert's request, so that these revelations could be uh, available to everyone. Hi, Garnet. Hi. How are you today? Okay. Good, thanks. How about you? (laughs) Good, stumbling a little over words. I don't know why. I've been doing this for about seven years. Anyway, um, I'm going to start off by asking you uh, where did you get the name for the book? I didn't come across that. How did, how did it come about, Dancing on a Stamp? Well, it's actually, I disclosed that in the very last chapter. You just maybe missed it. But anyway, how it came okay. about was that uh, my uh, when I was having a, a, a conversation one day with my spirit guide, Albert, and I was complaining about something that wasn't going right in my life. And he said, well, he said, you know, you have to look at your, at your life on earth like you're, like you're being, you're standing in the middle of a big, beautiful ballroom. And there's a, a band playing fantastic dance music. And everyone around you is, is up and dancing and swirling around the whole, bar, whole ballroom. But, but he said that I spent too much of my life remaining in one spot like I had leg, leg shackles on. And he told me I needed to break out of my shackles and to quit dancing on a stamp. 
that's where the title came from. And when Albert told me this, it was a sort of a catchy phrase, and I thought, gee, that sounds interesting. It, it just sort of stuck in my mind. And as I was casting about looking for a title to my first book, that phrase kept mm-hmm. on popping up. And so I, I actually asked Albert if that would be a good title, and he said yes. So that's where it came from. That's actually in the yeah. very last chapter of the book. Yes, I remember it, but I somehow I didn't get somehow the meaning as you just described it comes across now, but it somehow didn't click in my brain when I went through it. I remember seeing that. Um, okay, so he wanted you to free yourself up and and swirl around the whole ballroom, move, yeah, along, like, or, move out of yeah, my comfort zone, go though. across yeah. the whole dance floor and don't keep yourself just in a little uh, tiny area. Yeah, uh, exactly. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. So that was his, that was his phrase, and I just I, I glommed onto it and used it as my title. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, that leads me into my second question: uh, Why why would he choose someone who's dancing on a stamp to write his book? Why did he choose you? Well, I asked him that. He uh, he said that uh, uh, in in one of my pre or maybe in a couple of my previous lives on Earth, I had some experience writing books, uh, experience as an author, and they felt that maybe some of that would leak through to my current life. And so that this meeting that we had with Albert, uh, that I had with Albert, uh, w- w- which seemed to me like a chance meeting, but it was pre-planned beforehand by he and I before I was born. And so that was all wow. planned ahead of time. And they, uh, he just assumed that I might be a good candidate to uh, to to write his books. And he, and he felt really confident that he could uh, break me out of my comfort zone and get me to stop dancing on a stamp and uh, and... and uh, and um, move around more, and um, and 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 it's worked because I have done that, and I've, uh, I've, I've broken out of my shell, and I've uh, and I've written, uh, you know, the first book, the second book, and as as I was mentioning to you before we went on the air, a third book which would be released mm-hmm. sometime in 2016. Ah, does it have a title that you could disclose? Yeah, the third book is <laughs> called Dance of Heavenly Bliss, ah, and it'll be published okay. by my publisher, Ozark Mountain Publishing, who published. The first two books, um, and it's it's a sequel to the first two. It actually uh-huh. uh, describes more astral adventures that I had with my spirit guide Albert. But this time, he takes me to different places in the universe, different planets. I speak to a very interesting people on the spirit side, um, and it's just a, a, really a continuation of of his, uh, his his showing me things that he wanted me to write about. Okay, so uh, what kind of interest did you have in these subjects in this? Before you met Albert, well, um, you know, I, I was casting about looking for something to a, a new uh, belief system to latch onto. I was raised as a Roman Catholic, Paul, and mm-hmm. uh, when I sort of hit, you know, my uh, by my time I hit my thirties, um, I had already had a lot of questions about what they taught me as a child, and I, I and I ended up rejecting most of, the, not all of them, but a lot of their beliefs and dogma, and so then I was sort of in no man's land searching for something else that made sense to to explain, to answer all the big questions in life that I had been constantly asking myself, like, who am I? Yeah, why am I here? What's my life's purpose? And what happens to me when I die? And so I had uh, I had an interest in finding the answers to those questions. So I did read, uh, you know, various religious and spiritual books and metaphysical books, trying to find my answer. Still didn't find anything that really tied it all together in a neat little bundle until I met Albert. And then... Uh, in the course of our conversations, he uh, answered all my questions in a in a very uh, wise and truthful manner, and it all just hit home to me. It was like, yes, that's the answer, and I've and I've gotten it from the from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and uh, it, it just felt right to me. Yeah, and reading the book, I I will say it uh, it is a very nice book to read. <clears throat> I've read quite a, a number of these books in my lifetime, and. Uh, this is one of the better ones. It's clear, and it and it does uh, talk about things that most people are interested in. So, I think uh, uh, I'll give an uh, unsolicited testimonial. Well, thank uh, you very much. Something thank worthwhile. You. Something yeah, worthwhile what, 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 reading, definitely. Thanks, thanks for that, Paul. One of the things well, that Albert told me when when I was doing my manuscript was he said, he said, you know, you've been practicing, you're you, you've been thinking like a lawyer. He said, don't write like a lawyer. Um, you know, I want you to write something that uh, uh, don't use a lot of big words and esoteric terms. 
I want you to write something that's easy to read and easy to understand by by, right. by someone who has no background uh, in in spiritual or metaphysical matters. So that that's right. the way I, I wrote it on his instructions, and I think uh, you know based upon what people say, it seems that I've accomplished that. Hopefully, um, so that was that was his directive because I don't know, I, I, and I've read a few uh, you know metaphysical books where. Uh, you know, it, it's just hard for me to understand. Like, I'd read a paragraph, and then I'd think, okay, no, what exactly was said in that paragraph? You know, it's it yeah. you know, really hard to grasp. And, and there were yeah. so many of those books like that, and I was deliberately yeah. trying to make it so that people, as soon as they read it, you know, read a passage, they would know immediately what I was saying uh, or what Albert was saying, and uh, they could, you know, just grasp it immediately. So that was the that yes. was the goal. Yes, I, I agree. I think you did accomplish that. I mean, I was in a... Uh, in a computer industry and uh, in sales and uh you know we we had to talk clearly to our prospects so they understood what we were trying to sell them and so i understand about making things clear and plain and not use jargon or anything else that might be confusing um there is a call awaiting but i'll ask that caller to hold on um off uh, off mic uh, <clears throat> i i did bring up a topic called walk-ins. And the reason why, I had read about this uh, a while back, a number of years ago, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll explain in a second. But I had an experience myself recently that was kind of uh, very interesting. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into it. But it was a spiritual, very uh, dramatic spiritual experience and uh, I recalled the wa- this thing about walk-ins, and it ma- I thought it might be uh, connected. So I started reading a bit about it just to see. So why don't we just, uh, you know, it's, I know it's going to be in your book coming up, you told me. Can we talk a, a, a brief uh, couple of minutes about what walk-ins are? And, uh, sure. Do you want me to give you my, my understanding based upon my please, discussions please, with yeah. Albert? Yeah, okay. Well, it came up, and this, and this is in my third book, but I don't mind talking about it now. Um, it, essentially, he said that, uh, and I had raised the, uh, the matter with him, and he said, uh, yes, the concept of a walk-in, it is there, does exist, does happen. And what it means really is that, uh, you know, for the most part, in the, ordinary, in the normal case, um, your soul decides to incarnate on Earth, and, and you do a life plan, and you, so you, you incarnate and you, you sort of enter the body sort of right around the, the time of birth. Um, and and you sort of reside in that body until your, that physical body dies, and then your soul returns back to the spirit side. So in in most cases, it's sort of like one soul with one body till the end. But he said sometimes, what happens is that if the soul uh, sort of partway through the life decides that they have learned enough lessons for this one lifetime, or that they have nothing else to learn in that body, and 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 the soul decides it's time to leave. So rather than have the soul cause the physical body to die uh, when it sort of you know might be in the prime of its life. Um, it sometimes it arranges for another soul to come in and take its place. So the first soul exits, and and the new soul comes in where it left off, and that's that's why it's called a walk-in because it, it's uh, the the second soul uh, wasn't there from uh, from from the day of inception from from the birth. It came in later in life, and and he says that does happen doesn't it's not horribly frequent but it does happen from time to time and it's just a good way it, it sort of suits both souls because the first one wants to leave um and that and so they can accomplish that and the second soul is looking at it and saying oh well you know here's a here's a man in his uh, in his mid 40s uh, in the prime of his life and there's some very interesting experiences and lessons I can learn if I take over that body um and I don't really want to Start from fresh with a with a newborn baby, uh, so I will just enter that body and and live out the remaining years uh, of that physical body. And so it, it so it works well for the second soul to walk in, works well for the first soul who gets to exit, um, and everyone's happy. So that's in very simple terms. That's how a walk in occurs. <laughs> yes, and and, and what happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and sometimes uh, just to go on, uh, sometimes uh, a lot of times. Uh, you know, it, it's not even noticed that there's a new soul there, but sometimes it is because sometimes uh, uh, family and friends will de- detect a change in personality or a change in direction or a, uh, a change in desires and goals, 
um, and 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 they they might just sort of scratch their head and say, well, like what happened to this? Uh, what happened to my 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 father, my brother, my husband, or whatever? Um, and uh, and oftentimes the exchange, the walk-in exchange, happens uh, when there's been a, a, an accident, like some sort of trauma. And so, for example, it might often happen when there's a a, a car accident, and and that's when the the exchange is made. And so then the relatives might say, well. Uh, this person's personality must have been affected by the by the accident, uh-huh. um, and right. so that's what they usually attribute it to. In, in a lot of those cases, it's just that because there is a new soul in this body. Right. Well, also uh, sometimes a person I read that doesn't even realize it uh, that that it happened. That that's possible as well. And, and then on the other extreme, some people really uh, have a hard time because they feel like out of joint. You know? It's like something isn't right, and they just can't kind of get it all together. What's funny is the thing about the term walk-ins. I read it was it was it was made up by this woman who wrote a book about thirty or so years ago on the topic. My wife had comment. I was talking to her about. It. She commented. She says like, you know, when you go to a restaurant or 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 a beauty parlor, and you don't make an appointment, you just walk in. It was kind of interesting. I think, I think uh, that it actually did come about from that idea. In other words, it was wasn't planned ahead of time. It was just something that came about at the last moment. But it is quite a fascinating topic on its own. But uh, let's. Well, let me see uh, this listener and see if he or she wants to ask a question or just if they're on the phone, they could just be listening to the show. That's one way to listen. So let me. Uh, Give me a moment, okay? Okay. Hi, Hello? listener uh, nine seven eight area code. Do you want to have a question or comment? We just well, I have a comment and a question. I did Great. read the book Dancing on a Stamp. As a matter just of fact, give me fact, your first name, please. Kathleen. Kathleen, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I won it on Michael Long's show, Journey into the Light, and um, so um, it was. Uh, autographed for me by Garnett and sent to me. It was an easy read. Very. I, that's what I liked about it. It was an easy read and very, you know, it was very easy to understand. Now, my question is, though, I haven't read it in a long, long time. Um, first of all, is there a hell? And... I have a question about life's reviews because when you hear of life review, okay, let's me, start with the first question. Let okay, me hold you. Just, just, just go ahead. Uh, Garnet, you want okay. to address that question? Uh, hi, hi, Kathleen. Um, hi, honey. Uh, yeah, um, I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you won the book. I, and and I, I yeah, I read it. It was great. Okay, thank you. Uh, your first question: Is there a hell? The answer yes. is definitely no. There is not. And Albert was very clear on that. He said hell is just an invention of, uh, of various organized religions. And they invented hell uh, as a means to control the masses through guilt and fear. And so that they, you know, it, 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 here, here it's easy. This, they created this place, this awful place where you will go if you don't follow their rules and worship God in the manner that they say you should. And so that's the way of controlling people. Like, okay, you have to do what, as we say. This yeah, is like from the, the religious Catholic. leaders. Yeah, um, uh, or when you die, and if you don't make amends, you'll go to this awful place. So that was just invented by them. Uh, but there is no hell. Uh, there's no devil. There's no Satan. Um, and everyone, when they finish their lives on earth, Kathleen, they all, everyone returns, their souls return to the spirit side uh, or heaven or whatever you like to call it, the other side. So that's the only place you can go after you leave this, this life. <laughs> and there definitely is no hell. So, uh, But you go through a life's review and... We've all sinned in some manner during our life. You know, no one's without sin. And so when you go through that life's review, what kind of punishment? I mean, is there a punishment? There is no punishment. No, there's no punishment. Nobody judges you. God or the source doesn't judge you for what you did. Uh, No one else does. The only person, if you you want to call it, that, that passes judgment on your life is yourself. When you have your life review, you look back on your life, and you look back on on all the twists and turns you took. You look back on you know how many times you went off course, how many you know the mistakes you made. You also look at all the good things you did as well. Um, but uh, you know you, you, the, the purpose of the life review is for you to see how your 
your words and actions affected others and how you really managed, how closely you managed to stay on the, on the path you had planned for yourself in your life plan before you were born. Mm-hmm. But 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 that that's it that's it. You're, it it's sort of like a self judgment, but it's not it's not intended to make you feel badly about what you did. It's a matter of, it's a learning tool so that you can look b- uh, back on your life and say, okay, well here's where I made a mistake and I wished I hadn't done that. And it helps you plan your next incarnation to plan events where you can uh, we, we can try to you know uh, go back and learn the lessons you failed to learn and experience the things that you missed in your in your last life. So it's really a learning tool. Uh, but there's no punishment. Uh, no one gives you a grade. No one judges you. Um, it's just yourself. You, you look at, at what you've just done, and you uh, and you make a, a self-assessment. That's really the purpose of a life review. Okay. I, I just want to I want to interject here. Sure. Just one thing that seems to be uh, relevant, and that is karma. I mean, you do you may create some negative karma though, right? Yeah, but 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 but, but Albert's take on karma is different from a lot of people's thoughts. I mean, some of the Eastern religions, Paul, think that uh, karma is sort of like a, a law of the universe, so that if you live a bad life here, then uh, the universe will make you be reincarnated in the uh-huh. next life as some lower animal, like a snake or a cockroach. Oh, yeah. Or, no, or no, 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 no. I didn't mean yeah, it that so, way. No, I know. I meant I just, just that. No, no, no I hear what karma. you're saying. Okay. Uh, that, I, I'm just gotcha. saying that that's one, one view. The other view is that, that, that you, sure. uh, if you create negative karma, you get caught on the wheel of karma, and you have to keep on coming back and coming back until you clean off that, that karmic debt. And Albert said, you, you, you do accumulate karma and you can create uh, negative karma, but it's not a law of the universe so that you, you don't have to keep on coming back to earth if you choose not to because every soul has the ultimate right to choose whether they come back to earth or to another planet or just to stay on the, on the spirit side. But he said, most souls, if they've accumulated some negative karma, will feel a moral obligation to come back to yeah, earth yeah. and to try to balance the books. So it's really a, a moral imperative, more more so than a law of the universe or the law of God or whatever. So it, 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 that's his take on karma. That makes sense. It's it's basically keeping track, so you know if, if there's something you might want to work on. Here's kind of a list <laughs> of things exactly. you might want to. It's a system okay. of keeping track of your actions, and and so you there know you there's positive actions and negative actions, and then you know as I say, most souls if they have a negative balance, they will feel. A, a, a personal obligation to sort of go back and clean and, and clean off the debt and wipe the slate clean, but they don't have to if they just if they're totally fed up with incarnating on Earth and don't want to do it again. They can go somewhere else or they can stay in the spirit side. They're not bound to return ever, you know over and over and over until that's cleared off. Uh, so that, that's his take was was that it's not it's okay. not a you don't get trapped in the karmic wheel. Um, you you, okay. you come back if you have a negative debt because you choose to. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I have one more if it's okay to ask. Okay, not too long because it's getting towards the end, and uh, as long as it's quick. Go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Um, Now, I've often heard that we choose our life before we come here, and I don't know, like, why I choose this life, because I went from (laughs) riches to rags. I went from a charmed life to living off food stamps, and wow. it's like, is there? It must be a reason why we don't have any memory when we get here of what we chose for our lives, because we never would have done it. <laughs> I guess it's just a statement. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you're right. And, and the reason that we don't remember what we put in our life plans, Kathleen, is because if we did, that would make life on her too easy. It, 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 Albert said it would be like. Uh, your teacher giving you the questions and answers to a final exam before the exam. There'd be yeah. really no point in writing the exam. So that's one of the big challenges of, of living on Earth is that we we don't remember what's in our life plan, and plus we have free will to make actions. And so because of that, we will often stray off the course uh, that we had planned for ourselves. But a number of the things that happen in, in our lives were actually planned beforehand, and it's difficult for us to understand why we would do that but when we were on the spirit side before we were born, we had a very good reason. And it's always because we wanted to experience things, learn some lessons that we needed for our evolution. So it, it may seem like a big mystery to us now as humans, but there was good reason for it before we were born. Mm-hmm. Kathleen? Thank you so much. Before I let you go. Yeah. Kathleen? Yeah. Let me just make a suggestion, okay? I work in the field. I, I okay. do 
emotional healing and I'm a spiritualist as well. Um, so let me make a suggestion, if I might. Uh, try to think of what you learned from this experience because that's what it probably was for. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I do. I kind of have a... As soon as we learn what we need to learn, often things change. Yeah, that's what I would think about, what what you learned from it. But Yeah. uh, Thanks for coming on. It was very interesting. thank you, and I appreciate it. Thank you both. My prop. Thank you, Kathleen. Okay, can you leave me on? Yeah. She's on. She's on. I didn't take her off. I just took her off the air. Uh, because we're getting towards a break. The live portion uh, is going to end in about five minutes, but we can continue another about another ten minutes. But before we go and lose you know, that live feed, uh, if anyone would like to listen to the rest of the show beyond that, just go back to the show when it's over, and the podcast will be there automatically, and you could fast-forward it towards the end if you have listened up to that point. Uh, if someone's starting over, you can just listen from the beginning and just, you know, put it to the end. I just want to tell everyone you're listening to Getting on Top on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Paul Morris. We hear Wednesdays from 4 to 4.30 p.m. And today my guest is Garnet Schulhauser. And uh, before we lose a live feed, why don't Garnet... Tell people uh, your website or any other way uh, you might want them to get in contact with you or find out about your activities. Okay, Okay, well, the best source of information about me and my books is my website, which is garnetschulhalser.com. Now, because that's a bit hard to remember and spell, you can also get to it by dialing in dancingonastamp.com, or if you just Google Dancing on a Stamp, my webpage will show up in the Google page. So on my website, there's information about me. Um, there's uh, information about uh, both of my books. You can actually uh, watch a book video for each of my books. Uh, you can download a free excerpt from each book. And there's also links to all my social media sites like Facebook, um, Twitter, uh, Google+, uh, LinkedIn, and so on. All you have to do is click on the little icon. And there's also uh, buy links on my website to all the popular online bookstores where if you click on it you can you're able to buy my books um and uh it just makes it very easy because once you click on it you get right to the page on on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and so on where you can actually just quickly uh, purchase my books and uh, and uh, and order them so uh and also my email address is uh, on my website it is contact at com, and I'd love to hear comments or questions from your viewers Paul Excellent. So let's just get to a couple of topics from the book before we uh, before we finish up. And I'm perusing this, uh, and uh, I think one area that people are probably interested in, if they're interested in the show, is spirit communication. Could you talk about that a little? Yeah. Well, the uh, you know the, the spirits, the good spirits from beyond the veil, are, are are talking to us all the time, particularly from our spirit guides. And every human has, uh, you know, at least you know two or three spirit guides. Some have many more, and our spirit guides are like our coaches, and, and they're spirits on the spirit side who have perhaps lived previous lives with us, but they are very familiar with with us and what we want to do, and 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 they are always watching what we're doing, and they're always sending us messages, uh, particularly when we come to a fork in the road and we have to make a decision: should I go left? Should I go right? What should I do? Uh, but their messages, uh, you know, unlike my conversations with my spirit guide, uh, w- which were very direct and easy to understand, most times messages from your guides are very subtle. And they're like flashes of intuition, whispers in your mind, uh, gut feelings, uh, coincidental events, and, and, and various other things that, that are easy to miss. And, and we often don't hear those messages because our minds are cluttered with so many other thoughts, you know, about the past and about what's going to happen in the future, uh, that we often miss them. Uh, but our guides are always there. They're always trying to communicate with us. And the way we, that, that we can sort of become better at listening to their messages is by quieting our minds through meditation. That's one way uh, so that you get rid of the clutter in your minds and then these other messages from your guides will come through. Um, and, and so it's not an easy job, but, but uh, you know, with some practice you can uh, become better at listening to what your guides are saying. And they're there to help you to try to get you on back on course if you're off course 
from your life plan uh, and, and, and to give you some guidance so that you can have a, uh, a, a more fulfilling journey, uh, you know, on Earth in your in your current incarnation. Mm. Yes, and I, I I've always heard I've always heard that people you know some people are shy. I'm not that way about asking questions, but a lot of people are, and don't be shy about trying to communicate with your spirit guide because that's what they're there for, and uh, so they're happy when you do that. So you know, don't shy away. And often meditation is a very helpful tool to uh, to clear your mind, as as Garnet says, uh, to get through there. Um, another area I think that people might be uh, particularly interested in would be life on the spirit side, as you call it, or the spirit realm. You want to uh, comment on that? Well, yeah, the spirit side is like a lot of re- religions refer to it as heaven. Um, I don't like that term because it has religious connotations. So I've got uh, Albert referred to it as the spirit side, but it's it, it's at a very uh, it, I mean it's it, it's all around us. We can't detect it because it's at a very very high vibration level. But their uh, uh, souls don't have physical bodies. They don't have physical needs. They don't need to breathe or eat or drink. Uh, they don't need to procreate. Uh, they're they're basically like uh, uh, balls of energy uh, that sort of uh, vibrate at a very high frequency. Um, but on the spirit side, it, it's it's a very it's a very wonderful and uh, challenging place. It's uh, there's no negative emotion, so there's no fear, anger, hate, whatever. Uh, there's obviously no strife or crime or anything else. It, it, so it's a very idyllic place where souls are free to pursue knowledge, um, and they can do that in many ways. Like they can they can attend lectures, they can go to libraries and and, and read books or look at videos. Um, they can uh, they can attend uh, recreational events, uh, concerts, and so on. So it, it's not it's it, it's a very interesting existence, um, and they can also explore. Other places in the galaxy, they can actually travel as spirits in uh, in astral form to other planets, to you know, in, in other star systems and other galaxies, uh, j- to see what's there, to see if there's any life forms they may want to incarnate into uh, in in, uh, in the future. Um, and uh, you know, it's it, it's a it, it's a very happy place to be, a very happy journey uh, where all souls are trying to evolve. But there's no deadlines or no timetables, and no one tells souls what to do. So no one tells you that you have to incarnate on Earth or another planet or anywhere. You choose all this yourself, uh, and you choose your own pace for evolution. So it's a very wonderful a wonderful place. That's why they call it heaven. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, you talk about the illusion of time. And you know, time has always been such a difficult concept that even the, the greatest minds... Uh, in the world have have not tried to define it but uh you know how how does it uh how is it described from well, the uh from the spirit side yeah well albert says that that the linear time that, that we have on earth is just an illusion and and linear time of course i mean that the, we we perceive time to be that there's a past a present and a future and that we progress right. in a linear fashion from you know one to the other and 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 so on uh he says that's just an illusion in reality, on the spirit side, there is no past and there is no future. There's just one big now. Where everything exists in the present. Now, that's really hard for most humans to, to wrap their minds around, and I had a lot of difficulty with it. And, and sure. But Albert said, you know, don't worry about it. You don't have to fully understand that concept while you're on Earth because, you know, w- when you're on Earth, you're dealing with the illusion, uh, the, which is a very uh, uh, seemingly real uh, uh, presence of linear time, and so you just have to deal with that. When you get back to the spirit side after your body dies, then you will understand totally what I'm saying about uh, there being no past or, or, or future, just one big now. Uh, so anyway, that uh, I still don't fully grasp that, Paul, um, but uh, you know, I'm just dealing with the limitations of my human mind. And as Albert said, you know, those limitations will be gone once I cross over to the spirit side, and it will all be very evident to me. So I'm looking forward to that because I'm still, I still shake my head when I think about it, Paul. Well, I think we're we're programmed not to be able to understand it. Uh, again, being a being a, a programmer, uh, one time when I was out of college, way back when, um, it makes sense. It does that concept doesn't make sense. But the, what makes sense is that we could 
we could be programmed not to understand it. In other words, once our mind goes in that direction, it kind of like, it doesn't, you know, we kind of like blank out or it doesn't you know, compute. And there may be a reason for that. So we stick in our illusion. Uh, but, uh, you know, no, nobody could really conceive of that. It's, it's doesn't, you know, it's not part of, uh, part of our ability to, you know, to think. Um, you know, we need we need to believe the illusion, obviously, to take it seriously. So we do what we're here to do, and um, so it, yeah, it, it's a uh, very it's a very real and persistent illusion to people on the Earth plane. <laughs> and so you know, it, it, it's it, I mean, it's there. I mean, we we deal with it all the time. We always have to you know look to the future to see do I have an appointment, do I have a radio show, or you know what's happening next week kind of thing. <laughs> we do have to we use it to plan our lives, which is which is very helpful but um you, you know it, it it you know it it's not not something to be worried about according to albert like just he said you know if you don't understand it don't worry about it live within your illusion um and uh go ahead and live your life because that's sort of how it was intended for humans to live on your plane and so it was a deliberately planned illusion which uh which is very all very much all present for all of us um and it's not something to be concerned about so i'll just carry yeah, on and say yeah. okay i'm i'm going to live with it it's especially a problem when someone is cutting you off <laughs> because they're in such a rush on the highway. Uh, it, be, it can become a problem. Uh, what about soul memories? We'll say this would be the last topic, I guess. Well, soul memories, uh, his discussion with me, he said that, that uh, for the most part, we, uh, when, we, when we're born here, we, we're not allowed to remember our previous lives. That we've had it on, on this planet, and very good reason. So it, it would be too distressing and, and sort of too clutter up our minds too much. So we're not allowed to, to, to remember that. But sometimes some memories will leak through from a previous life. And so you know, he gave an example of a, a child prodigy, say in, in music, like Mozart. He uh, uh, he composed his first symphony when he was five, and that's at an age mm. when I was five. I was playing with toys, you know. And and, and yeah, so sure. he, he 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 said, well. Yeah, he, his memories of a previous life as a composer leak through, and 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 he uh, enough so that that by the time you know when he was five years old, he could actually compose a symphony. And and so there's there's a number of other examples like that. Sometimes it's a it'll be a memory of a, sometimes people will get a pain, you know, an inexplicable pain, say in their leg, um, and the you know doctors can't figure out what's wrong. And he said maybe it was a a, a, a leak through memory of a life, a previous life where. Someone was shot in the lake, and they're, or you know, and they're sort of having a leak through pain. So there's there's a number of examples like that. It doesn't happen a whole lot, but it does does happen from time to time, and and it can explain some uh, some things that have no other explanation. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, well, <clears throat> any final uh, remarks uh, before we uh, close? Um, n no, I just uh, just to reiterate that my third book will be published, released sometime in early 2016. It's called A Dance of Heavenly Bliss, and I'll have information on it on my website when it's released. Um, and I just invite everyone to dial into my website, GarnetSchulhelzer.com, for information about uh, about all my books. Well, thank you, Garnet, for being my guest. It's fascinating. And uh, <clears throat> Kathleen was a good caller, had some excellent questions. And thank you, listeners, for listening. And we'll be uh, back next week at the same time, uh, 4 p.m. East Coast time. And you're listening to Getting on Top on Block Talk Radio. And I'm your host, Paul Morris. And uh, we broadcast from the southern Hudson Valley region, New York State, which is the northern suburbs of New York City. And if someone would like to find out more about me and what I do, you could find me at conqueringdepressionforlife.com. It's a long one, conqueringdepressionforlife.com, and find out what really causes depression and uh, the ways you can address it. And you can find my email there uh, as well. And uh, my number is 845-425-6389 if someone would like to talk about uh, a problem they have and I could discuss it with you. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Garnet, for being my guest. We'll be back Thank next you, Paul. week. And we're going to go out to Freight Train Freddy.
He was up each morning with the dawn because he knew his daily run was long and hard and he had to be ready to get his freight train down the track determination he would never lack the little locomotive called freight train Freddy Everybody was his friend and they all helped him to the end To keep those freight cars rolling along steady He never knew what to expect and was very careful not to wreck The little locomotive called freight train Freddy The little locomotive called Freight Train Freddy's.